Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales, baby. This is season three, episode number 36. It's the season three finale. Yeah. I'm your host, Chingo Blingo, with the big tamarindo, the ghetto vaquero, el rey de four, play the masa messiah, the king of spices. No, I'm talking about. Uh, and producer Rob. Brr, 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 brr. What's up, buddy? How are you? That boy Rob, man. A beard looking luxurious player. I did. I put some uh, wax in it in the whole shebang for today's season finale. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. Let's just say that uh, 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 his wife, Don, don't be walking around frowning. That's right. You know, she, she walk around with a big smile on her face. You 24-7. Know? And, and Rob Beard just get just more luxurious That's every right. time. So, uh, sure. man, I feel like a comedian again, man. I just did a show. Yeah. Sold out. Sold out. Brr, 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 brr. Shout out to San Angelo, Texas. You guys were amazing. They had like a tornado warning that day. I was scared. I was like, man, if it ain't one thing, it's the motherfucking other. <laughs> My wife's eyelashes were flying in the wind. Babe, don't think about it. I'm going to be okay. Just save yourself. And uh, had a great time. My homie Midnight was out there. Uh, the, the young bull, Ralph Barboza, young comedian coming up. He's killing it. He's also from Dallas. Uh, yeah, man. All-star lineup. Shout out to Sydney, the owner of the club. He, he actually is putting out an album on Big, uh, Big Pokey. So Big Pokey, Houston rapper, putting out another album. And so that's great news. Um, we're headed to Mission, Texas next. And that sold out as well. Dope. Can I shout out a couple tour dates? Dude, before for we, sure. Let's pull it up. Are you the links on the website? Yes, sir. Most of these are up. Uh, I got. I got. We got to put the next ones on. Freedom of Speech tour up next. Mission Texas, March twenty sixth. New Braunfels, Texas, April third. That's at Goofy's. Then Brea, California, beautiful West Coast. Brea, California, April seventh. And then Colleen, Texas, April 9th, April tenth. We have a whole lot more coming. Corpus Christi, Ontario, Oxnard. Irvine, Houston, San Antonio, but just hit on my website, chingobling.com. So, to, this is a public episode, Rob. Yep, the main episode. So, to everybody listening, shout out whether you're on iTunes, Spotify. This is a good chance for you to check out what RPT is all about. If you want to join the TIA, the Tamale Intelligence Agency, we had people, man. We had some agents. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they were like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the TIA, homie. <laughs> and I was like, you know the secret handshake, homie? He's like, hey, check it out. I know the password, big doc. Tamale Intelligence Agency. He just recited a whole masa recipe to me. That's I was like, what's yeah. up. So um, if you want to join the Patreon, hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales if you want to figure out how chingo bling mr they can't deport us all who couldn't stand trump when he first won how the hell did chingo bling change his mind how did i get persuaded how did i do a 180 as they say yeah and we're talking about it man we're talking about left right republican democrat conservative liberal and the globalist the nationalist todo el pinche pedo, güey. Todo el pinche pedo. actually that clip is on youtube right now from uh, the most recent rpt where it starts off with, I know, mister, they can't deport us all. And then Chinga goes into explaining exactly what we've been talking about, kind of summarizing almost the season inadvertently. Like, you just started talking about it because we were on the subject. And if you want to go check that out, share it with your friends and family. Uh, that'll give you a good idea of everything that we've been talking about for the last three months in mm. about a three-minute clip. As Absolutely. far as, you know, the border, immigration, they can't deport us all, Chingo bling, yeah, the whole thing. because I'm mister, they can't deport us all. I was telling my soul today on the way back from the gym, I was like... Think about that. It's almost like um, it says a lot about 2020. It says a lot about Trump and how polarizing he is. Yeah. It says a lot about our media that Mr. They Can't Deport Us All. Like I wrote a four page letter when Trump first won. Like, dear Mr. Donald Trump, you have awakened the brown giant and we are deeply offended by your words. That's it. And, um, you know, I was pissed off like everybody else. Right. And how on earth am I now looking at the other side of the argument different? Basically, like, OK. It sounds cool to say, hey, man, we love immigrants. This is a country built on immigrants. And, you know, we just need an open, loose border. It's kind of like, okay, they can't deport us all. You're brown. That's how we identify. But if you're putting these women and kids in a worse situation, if you're telling them, hey, man, come on, on day one of my presidency, this is Joe Biden. Yeah. Uh, uh, what do you say? Amnesty for 11 million undocumented. So he's making these promises. People are making this voyage. And now they getting put into cages and or the I'm sorry the wrong terminology. What is the terminology? Soft sided now? heart. I that don't know. Overflow uh, shipping shipping containers. I don't know what y'all want to call them. Yeah. But basically, it's a rough thing, and and some people don't make that that voyage. You're incentivizing people. You're telling them, "Come on, I got you." And then they make the journey, and now it's a big old mess. It's an emergency down there. So yeah, and you know the United States is. 
the biggest melting not you know how we talk about houston being such a melting pot for mm-hmm. different cultures and yeah. you know races ethnicities people of all kinds of backgrounds the united states as a whole you won't find another place like the united states around the world we with, welcome with freedoms with freedoms and with with different people as well like there's no there's not another melting pot like the u.s where you we not only welcome but house the most like the the vast range of like multicultural people around the world mm-hmm. we welcome more people in every single year from different countries the borders compared to other places are i mean the country itself it, it i've seen people argue this about how it's like like you just said we were built on you know yeah, immigrants yeah. And it's true yes but what is like what exactly are you vying for here because no one does it quite like the u.s as far as welcoming other people in mm-hmm. and also showing them the american way and life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness kind of thing no matter where you're from yeah that's why everybody wants to come here exactly that's why a lot of people complain but never leave yeah so we love to say how america's racist and you know pinche george washington way is way tenia slaves homie you know, I can't get down with that. We need to rename it, you know, Stacey Abrams, you know, oh, or some shit. Oh, good segue. Or some shit. But uh, what do we have here in our notes, man? One year anniversary of 15 days to flatten the curve. That's it. That was a year ago. A year ago today or yesterday, actually. Is that the part where Gringo Bling reads you the news? I'm, I think he's going to have to. Okay. We have a lot of news here. So shout out to uh, the team at Louder with Crowder who did a full, full hour and some change episode, probably close to 100 sources of different claims and truths about what we heard for the last 12 months and what actually the reality was. All right, y'all. Now, this is Gringo Bling. I tell you what. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're look, already gonna look at here. We're gonna get kicked off YouTube. Hold on. Wow. <laughs> Can look here, man. This is Gringo Bling. Uh, first of all, they tried to uh, cancel. They tried to cancel me. But check this out. Here's the claim. They said 15 days to slow the spread. What's the source? CBS Evening News. What's the truth? Over a year later, 60 percent of businesses open in April were closed by September, and at least 22 million jobs were lost. What's your source? Market Watch and CNBC. All right, Rob, you read the next one, bro. Because <laughs> people are gonna they're gonna unsubscribe from the Patreon. <laughs> I don't want to be a member of the Thea no more, homie. Uh, no, I, I am. I, we're, so I told Chinga, let's let's read them periodically throughout the episode because there's so many of them. Yeah. The hat and the the okay. whole bit is a good. We'll it was it also a great, uh, an idea of mine. But you know, we we'll do it in segments. Then. In segments, yeah. Also, maybe not go so hard. Like you sounded a little bit like Boomhauer <laughs> slash Hank Hill. <laughs> Mixed with a little bit of like, I'm warming up, man. Give, <laughs> cut me some slack. You know, I'm hey, man. I'm I started off. I started off on college radio, not professional radio. I mean, all right. Man. So he, this is very interesting though, because we have two pages here with sources of what the claim was. Yeah. Versus the claim of flatten the curve and basically the messaging, the lockdowns, the masks, yeah. the Fauci, and, the, whole, the administration, the whole thing. And of course, we're we're not saying that. People, scientists don't make mistakes. You know, we're not saying that in the fog of war, when we're when we're being hit, when when a when a what is it? The human, the human species is being threatened by this virus. You know, we kind of knew that there's going to be a fog of war, and that uh, government officials and and different agencies were going to be trying to figure it out. We understand that. So let's just let's just premise it with that. All right, here's another claim: two point two million in the U.S. alone would be dead by October. Source, Imperial College, White House, and Joe Biden. <laughs> that was their claim. Uh, the truth is, by October, it was 199,942, and today, it's 535,227. Sources, New York Times, and COVID tracking. Um, yeah. And that didn't account for asymptomatic people, right? Mm. I, think it's, I think it might be in the next line. Uh, oh, okay. It doesn't account for a- asymptomatic and... Uh, oh, Okay uh let me see the next line is by october okay claim the mortality rate will be 3.4 percent mm-hmm. this what were the sources cnbc wion youtube bloomberg reuters and hannity mm, even hannity reported the truth it's actually turned out to be 1.8 percent in the u.s not including asymptomatic and un- undiagnosed cases source worldometer uh the death rate per capita in the u.s is 0.162 Source, COVID USA. Uh, remember, these doctors were banned from Facebook and removed from YouTube for saying exactly this. Source, LWC. Um, Louder or Crowder. He, here's, a, here's a good one. I'll probably just stop after this one. Um, claim, the virus can live in the air for days and on surfaces. Sources, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> Truth, no. Surfaces, 
uh, and are not the main ways COVID is spread. It can only live on cardboard for a few hours. COVID is not airborne? Wow. I thought it was. There you go. Sources, World Health Organization and the New York Times. Yeah. And there's a lot more claims on there about lockdowns, and we're going to get back to it. Yeah, and there was that video recently of uh, Fauci. I think he was, he was on CNN, and, and uh, I think it was Jake Tapper saying, hey, so three feet, six feet really doesn't make yeah. a difference that we're finding out. Was that right? Was that yeah, what? Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think Jake Tapper asked him, like, new... And, and remember, you're going to hear this shit a million times. New study shows. I yeah. can pretty much say whatever the fuck I want and then just say, well, new study shows. Yeah, as long as you cap, like the caveat is a new study showed, not yeah, the one from last year. Yeah, new study. Because it's a carrot with the stick. It's just every day, it's a new news story or whatever. But um, the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Jake Tapper. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So Jake Tapper said, uh, hey, that so, workout must have been hard. Drink yeah, that. dude. It kicked our ass. It kicked our ass. Um, so Jake, Jake Tapper from CNN asked Dr. Fauci, hey, so they're saying that now three feet might be cool to get these kids back in school. I think that's oh, okay. that really plays a big thing, I think, in terms of public pressure, public opinion. You got soccer moms and just they tried blaming it on blaming it on uh, nice white parents. <laughs> Did you hear about that article? Oh, no. it was a there was an article. I don't know if it was New York Times, one of those really woke type of columns or open ed letter type of thing. And basically, it kind of went viral, but they were saying nice white parents are pushing the schools to open up quicker at the expense of little brown lives. Oh, you know, wow. little black lives, little brown lives. What a spin. Basically. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, the, I didn't, none of the school stuff is even on today's ag uh, agenda or, uh, or uh, what do you want to call it, flow. But it's funny you also mentioned that because I'm seeing more of these videos where like uh, school boards are are you know resigning and people on board and all the videos of mothers or even teachers talking to like you don't speak for us kind of thing and it's getting really heated that's a whole nother we're talking about the border we're talking about you know joe breezy we're talking about all these things and then the schools are in their own little corner right now battling it out between what do we do teachers superintendents yeah uh, the kids themselves the parents i think they're trying to build back better that's probably <laughs> what the fuck they mean like give us some money we a union you know. And that's another thing we should break down maybe uh, on the next episode or, or as we go through season four now is what this $1.9 trillion stimulus yeah. package is actually mm -hmm. going to go for. I think less than, I don't know what it was, 2% is actually for the people. Yeah. The rest is for uh, basically municipal sta yeah, states and municipalities that fucked up during the last 12 months. Basically a blue state bailout is yeah. what some people call it. And foreign aid, again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they're going to, I heard that they were trying to spin the border crisis basically saying that's why we need to give more money to central america to restabilize their countries because they're suffering from uh they they said uh even climate change they started name basically like bitch they need a green new deal too mm. um i don't know but but even like if you if you owe child support if you have any kind of debt throughout this year where you weren't allowed to work that's that's where that stimmy's coming from <laughs> it was like let's make a stimmy for the debt collectors dude somebody put a comment on uh, some post somewhere of, of ours and um it was really well put i don't remember all of it but the gist of it was that what joe biden's doing is basically like he's fulfilling his promises to his backers and lobbyists that he's promised for the last half a century Ooh. that he can finally actually fulfill on because Ooh. he has that pin and he can do executive orders like that mm. you know i said you know what i don't know i don't know that i ever because we've said it's 47 years and what has he done we've said that so many times and it's reported or semi-reported but when it was framed around that like for half a century he's been telling these people he's going to do x y and z and now he's just like i got the pin i'm gonna fucking do it i was like you know what you're absolutely right that's a very good point I love that you said how they framed it. That's something that I want uh, all the members of the TIA to... <clears throat> that, that's something that we want to be discussing on this podcast. Every episode. as I mean, as a running theme in terms of how to decipher uh, messaging from you know our government or whoever. Uh, for example, I heard Scott Adams reframe this border situation... Like this, I, I posted on what did he said, and I, he didn't really give me any comments. I was like, he's probably too boring for people. But basically, here's what he said, Rob. Peep this. He said, if we know that the cartels in Mexico are the ones that control the border, uh, bring in China's fentanyl, and they're doing all the human smuggling, and they have a larger presence of, along this border region, 
more than the Mexican government because the Mexican government, they don't want no smoke. So yeah. they just stay out of there. So he basically said it's kind of like there's this nameless little country in between uh, the U.S. and Mexico. This nameless little country that happens to be kind of run by the cartels and, and their Chinese par partners. So he says, in essence, our southern border is more so a border with China than with Mexico. And that one's kind of hard for me. He's, he might be reaching a little bit only because, like, we have family like in Reynosa and Tamaulipas, stuff like that. And I don't... I don't know how visible it would be. Like, I don't know how bad things are right now in terms of cartel stuff. Or they just see, like, you know, you're not literally literally going to see, like, some CCP shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Motherfucker with his little suit and shit. <laughs> you're not literally going to see that. So it's kind of like, okay, I see where you're going with it. But he basically reframed it as, he's like, look, we keep talking about this issue as, you know, crime's going to go up. Taxes are going to go up. Um, you know, they letting in gangs. And, you know, some, some people that are going to be up to no good, they're going to fuck up. Um, you know, it's a it's a burden on the system. He's like, y'all looking at it wrong. He's like, if if the Republicans reframe it as y'all are putting more money in these cartels' pockets, they're able to turn around, spend that with China, get get some more um of the ingredients that they need to make fentanyl because they already found the labs in uh, Mexico, or whatever. Reframe it like that, where it's like, no, these folks are controlling territory, like we're surrounded. You know what I'm mm -hmm, saying? It's mm -hmm. like we're surrounded and they're here. Yeah. And you got Fang Fang over there sucking on Thang Thangs. Who, who, Swalwell's back on an intelligence committee. Man, like, that don't make no sense. <laughs> no sense, right? Swalwell. This dude is from California. He started messing with the Chinese spy when he was like a local uh, official in the city somewhere in Cali. And they found out she's a spy. They found out that he was probably giving her info. And he was one of the main people spreading the uh, Russia, 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 Russia hoax. Yeah. The Russia rumor. The Russia. Man, I heard it was Russia. Man, I heard they got spies over there. I heard Trump's people and Trump's uh, General Flynn and these people went and met up with some Russians. It's like, all the while, you're getting your thing thing sucked by Fang Fang. <laughs> all the while. The entire time. Oh, uh, you do a weekend and you come back funnier than ever. Thank you, brother. <laughs> you know, it's so going back to the framing uh, conversation. I was actually driving here. Weather's kind of shitty. It's already muggy because it's so it's just hot as fuck now. People don't know how to drive anywhere apparently when it rains. I, people always say that about Cali, but Houston's no better. It's just like sprinkling, and then there's five accidents. We always got traffic. It's unbelievable. We always got traffic. And I know it's a boring conversation because every semi big city says that. Houston's unbelievable. It's fucking retarded. Yeah, there's some there's some little um, bottlenecks. Yeah. Uh, so, but while I was sitting in traffic, actually, I, I started thinking. I uh, just kind of had some Metallica blaring. It had, actually helps me concentrate. Odd, I know. The what? Say it again. M Metallica. I had some heavy metal going, and that actually helps me concentrate. Oh, okay, good. So, w w I've seen comments too about, like, for instance, let's just take about the talk about the, the video you posted where the Washington Post, which we'll get to next, vindicated basically Trump about mm -hmm. retracting the statement, all the, basically another hoax, a hoax that, again, we've already talked about so many, but it was classified a hoax. You it know? was the one during the Georgia Senate runoff. Yeah, just before and, the Senate runoff. And the hoax was that Trump was, was, was a mob boss. Yeah. And he made a call down there and said, find me some votes. Right. And now we know that it's not true and their source was never really validated, but everybody ran with the story. And I have a clip and we'll probably play here in a second, but what I was thinking on the call was, People listening to RPT, you know, look at how everything's been framed over the last 12 months and what we've been talking about just for the past three months, and then kind of look at everything that you consume on a daily basis on social media. And maybe if you still watch Terrestrial Legacy Media, which I, I reshared it, and I was like, Legacy Media is just such divisive garbage, right? And we, by legacy, you mean like mainstream? Yeah, old, old school. school. Yeah, print, all the MSM stuff, all the things that, you know, people think are gospel. Yeah. I say, I say all the people. It is still a large portion of the people. I mean, I, up until... Shit, how long ago did I end my USA Today subscription? It was <laughs> it was more so for joke writing. Yeah. But but yeah, I, I was like, nah, fuck this normie ass shit. So as you start peeping game here on RPT and other shows similar to it, uh like kind of pay attention to how we're framing it and how it's being framed on the news and terrestrial, you know, print and whatever. So that because people are, I, I feel like are coming sometimes reluctantly because they got to know what Chingo Bling's saying and why he's saying it. And it might be hard to swallow that pill, for lack of a better yeah. phrase. And uh, it, it's all, you have to context, like, it's all got to mm -hmm. be contextualized around what we're trying to convey. And it really is, hey, this is RPT, a.k.a. the Common Sense Show. And sometimes what we think is common mm -hmm. sense, you might completely disagree with initially. But you got to pay mm -hmm. attention to the bigger picture. Yeah. Which is what we try to say, try to talk yeah. about every week. Yeah, because people's opinions 
get assigned to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's real easy to just pick a team or to be partisan. And that's not really good for you. They already found studies that it pretty much creates brain damage. Like if you only consume one source, um, I, mean, I don't have a source, but look it up. <laughs> look look, look it, it up. Look, look it up. Like it. legit people. I can't even remember what the fucking source was, but take my word for it. You know, <laughs> I'm a comedian. That's what I do. Basically, if you're too fucking partisan, it, it just really fucks your brain up. Um, so what Rob was saying is that as you're consuming information, especially if we're ever in a crisis, like the power goes out, uh, bad weather is coming. You have to be able to sift through the BS. Yeah. You have to be able to really use critical thinking and contextualize and, and consider a source. These days, this is what you should probably do. Get yourself a handful of really, really, really smart, credible people uh, that, have, that have a good understanding across the board in terms of like um, economics, world type shit. So let's just say, for example... Um, well, how do you say his name? God Saad? Gad Saad? Gad Saad. Mm -hmm. uh, G-A-D-S-A-A-D. -A -A Genius evolutionary biologist. Very smart dude. Um, let me see. You got like a dude named Mike Cernovich. Some people don't like him. Uh, Scott Adams. Um, I mean, even think, obviously Ben Shapiro, some of his stuff, Lecha Crema Los Tacos. Like, no, that's it. <laughs> like, uh, the liberals are really going to ruin America in six months. <laughs> Shit ton of crema. I mean, he, but, but he makes a lot of sense. So anyway, the point is, when people are trying to persuade you, when you when they make a headline, when they make clickbait, when they're creating a story, they make it juicy. They they say it, if it bleeds, it leads. Right. You know it's clickbait era. Anyway, be, be on the keep your head on the swivel. Keep your head Braza. on the swivel. Another week, another call. NBC oh, News oh, confirming hold on, pause real quick, that pause President real quick. Trump. Okay. This, just to set it up, uh, sorry, because I went off on a tangent. Oh, yeah, go ahead. So this video you're about to play yeah. is when the Washington Post was was saying that Trump supposedly said, find, find the fraud? Or yes, what? find the fraud. And this was from just before the Senate ran, uh, runoff against, you know, what it was, whatever it was, uh, Ossoff yeah. and Reverend, whatever the fuck. Yeah. So, so basically, um, another trick they do is they'll just say, we have an anonymous source. Basically, stop believing news and stuff that's based off of some anonymous source. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, what we've seen is that every time they have an, a, a story or some kind of like, oh my God, President Trump, allegedly, <clears throat> yeah. uh, a source say, sources say. It's all anonymous. If, if they don't ever put their name on it, this is what happens. Yeah, and we got, so there's, they released this call, which you can find it as well, that actually um, backs up the truth, which is the clip, or the statement actually, which I also have pulled up. But let's just watch the clip real quick. Y'all heard it last year, but here's a little super cut, a little compilation. A national hero. This President Trump personally called Georgia's lead in elections investigator and demanded that person produce evidence which didn't exist and, quote, find the fraud adding that if they did so, they would be a, quote, national hero. The Washington Post reported yesterday that President Trump called a Georgia election investigator and pressured him to, quote, find the fraud. And President Trump apparently pressured an election investigator to find the fraud. Again, not the phone call out of Georgia, another one. We over and over and over again, right? <clears throat> so then they, they, just put, they just put it out there. Yeah, they just put it out there. And uh, people ran with it, right? So Washington Post posted it. And everyone covered it for weeks leading up to the runoff races. And, and Trump continued to look like the bad guy. Yep. And then Biden got elected. Right. So I'm going to, the statement, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty long statement, but it, it's, I mean, the gist of it is that he acknowledges everything. And I got this from uh, from Zero Hedge, uh, which they're, they're considered a far right uh, economy, money kind of investment uh, publication. But nonetheless, the statement's there. Uh, Trump acknowledging that, you know, the mainstream, what they've done is what, basically what the, the damage is done. What they said, what they reported, the damage is done. By the time they retract it. Yeah. It, they, they just shitting on your name. Yeah, man. And um, if you haven't read the statement, go read it. And if you haven't heard the audio, go listen to it because it solidifies what we've been trying to say here on the podcast is that uh, you got to do your research. If you don't see a video, if the, you don't have the actual full context of the call, because a good rule of thumb 
is if you go to the original video and you go 30 seconds forward or 30 seconds backwards, you'll get the context of the clip that they try to bait you in with. Mm -hmm. If you ain't got that, I wouldn't trust the source. I wouldn't trust the uh, article or the headline or anything. And Rob's being nice. He's just saying 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. Yeah. Because it, 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 it came out some news about um, the shit Donald Trump was talking about when, when people said he was talking about drinking bleach, but he kept saying disinfectant you know right, right. It, it acts as a disinfectant and he wasn't like they cut out the part where he's like a new uh treatment uh, using uv light and it kills the virus instantly it's gone it's gone in a minute and you know you get with a doctor he kept turning to dr burke saying right you would need the help of a doctor but it would it'd be inserted in the body as it and it would act as a disinfectant well now they're like okay we're almost done perfecting this treatment where we're going to stick this fucking UV light in you and it's going to act as a disinfectant. Right. That's what he was talking about. But the fucking news was so was so busy being a, a, the propaganda wing of one political party, they were just framing him left and right. Which they're eating their own tail at this point, but we'll get to that in uh, future top topics here. I want to see if there's anything we can kind of sift out of here that was of, uh, of, of like real prominent that we could point out. Let me see. Let me see. Because... I don't want to play the full call or the full video because they're super long. But anyway, like I said, go go check it out. Listen to it if you haven't heard it yet. Or at least peep game on the retractment. Oh, and even look, check this out. When they were doing the impeachment part two, the mm -hmm. second one, the, second. the sequel, when they were doing the impeachment brief, the fake quote was was used, was in there. Okay. So basically. That's, the monitor's far away, guys. I was trying to find that part. Yeah, but basically like Trump was busy just taking care of business. Meanwhile, the news is going ham on him every day. And then when it's time to try to imp impeach him again for some other shit he didn't really do. Yeah. They're using a bunch of hoaxes in their argument. They're like, ladies and gentlemen, he called Nazis fine people. Right. And then the next day, Trump's lawyers, who didn't know that shit was fucking doctored and yeah, edited. edited. They, the next day, they had to come on and be like, look, man, they done based their entire fucking thing on on shit that didn't happen you know this is and this will fall on deaf ears like most things do because i already i've seen a lot of the tweets and the reporters you know tweeting it out on twitter and tweeting the video and the call and the link and the retractment and the statement and everything and the tweets below the replies to it are what's the big deal a couple of words weren't used and they switched it out for different words the gist of it was that he was still saying find me eleven thousand votes find me this he was still totally just oblivious to what they just what Meaning, this retractment was yeah the retractment was we didn't say he said that on that call. We said we had another source about another call. Yeah, I and mean, he didn't say the words that we printed and everyone else ran with for weeks. Yeah, basically it's called the okie doke. And La Raza is so busy. La Raza was so busy working during Trump's presidency <laughs> that we didn't have time to pay attention to half of this shit. It's true. And you were luckily to be busy as well. You were like, I don't know what's going on. Man, look here. <laughs> I accidentally put premium gas... In, in the black car, right? not, not the Lexus. Okay, okay. By mistake, that car don't need no premium. <laughs> I accidentally put premium. I'm looking at the... Wait, the, let me guess, let me guess. Uh, it's it's a, damn near $4. It was, uh, yeah, it was probably, it probably cost you about $52 to fill it, up. It was almost $50. And this is a very good gas economical car. Yeah, and, and it's not a big tank. It's a small yeah, tank, it's like it a 12-gallon tank. And it don't need premium. No, it doesn't. And... Uh, my dumb ass put premium which is fine <laughs> it might it might actually run even more efficiently even better with more octane. so i'm not mad at the premium it's the price i'm at a joe breezy <laughs> anyway uh... so yeah it kind of sucks anyway washington post they did a retraction but by then ain't nobody paying attention trump's out of office they did what they had to do the, the dems returned the they, they, they run the senate now they done played despacito yeah um yeah yeah value uh, well, let's see. What is this? Liberals are calling out the Democratic Party hypocrisy. Examples, Sarah Silverman and Bill Maher. Which is what we have pulled up here. And have you seen Silverman's video yet? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Let's well, play she, it. She's basically, yeah, go ahead. We'll play it for our listeners here real quick. Ness of the party I am in. Bring it back. to It's yeah. the absolutist ness of the party i am in that is such a turnoff to me it's so fucking elitist <laughs> you know for something called progressive it allows for zero progress it's all or nothing no steps toward 
All or fucking nothing. Again, righteousness porn. And I've been thinking about this a lot, just in general. I I just, I don't know that I want to be associated with any party. I really, I think I don't want to be associated with any party anymore. It just, it comes with too much baggage. Every party, it comes with... Christ. Anyway, drags mm-hmm. on. Any party. Yeah, that okay. vocal fry is a uh, hell of annoying. But, um, yeah, and she was, man, not too long ago, just riding that train of railing the people that are uh, not on her side, and this is the side to be on. What, what, was she, how, what was she saying in the past like that? Oh, man, like when people would call her out about like uh, her, like she basically made her career on shock comedy, right? Like mm-hmm. saying the most crazy yeah. shit. And then she's on the side where that's not allowed. She's like, yeah, you know, I'm, uh, I don't do that anymore. And uh, I'm finding other ways to be funny. So uh, we're going to, you know, just ignoring it as if it wasn't a, a subject that people on the right are getting attacked for constantly or just anybody that doesn't align with their views. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, I, I don't like that. You know, like uh, progressivism isn't the way to go or, or however she's spinning it in this video. But it's just if you watch the other videos of her talking about politics and Trump, it's like. Why, why the sudden, like, are you finally seeing the light or do you realize that you were wrong about a lot of the things you talked about in the past? I don't know. She's just a pretty powerful figure when it comes to entertainment and uh, the left and in comedy, yeah. I guess. And the reason this video is making its rounds is because obviously it's uh, one of those I gotcha moments where people on the right, oh yeah, Trump supporters, conservative people, Republican people, whatever. I agree with her that you don't want to associate too much. Sure. I mean- I think moving forward, based on the direction both of these parties are headed to, I mean, if you vote libertarian, is that kind of throwing your vote away? It just depends on who the fuck is running, because if the Democrats ran somebody with some sense or a little bit more energy, Mm -hmm. you know, wasn't sleepy, (laughs) um, they probably could have earned my vote back, even though they do a lot of, uh, what's that word, man, Uh, pandering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that type of shit is annoying, and, and it's a turnoff. So I'm almost like Sarah Silverman, like, it is annoying. Don't pander. I'm not Latinx. Uh, and then also, you don't want to just be so um, hardcore, closed-minded, like, everything my party does is right. Everything right. your party does is wrong. And it's like, no, sometimes the truth is somewhere in between, a lot of times. Yeah, it's not all just black and white, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's gray areas and you can agree and disagree with. But you could also have, you know, conversations with family and friends where now it's like, I was just talking to somebody yesterday where it, I don't think you can live in a let's agree to disagree world anymore. It's going to have to be more of a live and let live. And you're probably not going to associate with these people anymore because it's getting to the point where a lot of people are feeling so strong about, you know, more than ever, this is just what I'm seeing because I'm not a very religious person, but about their religion and about obviously school and about these certain things that are concrete staples of your life. And if your your quote unquote close friend or maybe even a family member doesn't see that and chooses to resent you or have an argument about that all the time, why would you say agree to disagree and continue to live with them? That's not going to be a uh, it's not going to be a very good relationship for a lot of people because they can't separate those things, mm. unfortunately. Yeah, I can because yeah, most of the people I know, I'm assuming, are just Democrats because yeah. most artists, most Latinos, you know, shit. But uh, what you were saying about, or like what we were saying about how it's nuanced. Like in other words, if it had been Tulsi Gabbard versus, let's just say, Trump didn't run mm-hmm. and he just had said whoever, Mike Pence or somebody. Then it it's like okay well basically the Democrats got to earn my vote the Republicans got to earn my vote and all this shit we're saying is a testament to the fact that Trump wasn't your traditional Rhino Republican like he wasn't on no um, what's the word man like like Mitt Romney he's just not gonna communicate and then you got these like Rhino Republicans that it's like they're not really the best either yeah so it's not just that oh. Trump is Republican, and that's why he was a more attractive candidate. It's like, nah, he was just taking care of business. Yeah, he, and he wasn't, again, a traditional Republican. A lot of Republicans don't like him and didn't like him and probably won't ever like him if he runs again. And to kind of go to what you were saying before that, like, like to quote Jimmy Dore, you know, in order to earn your vote, these sides need to give you something. You can't negotiate after the fact. You negotiate before, you get it up front, and then they get your vote. But what's happening and what we're talking about over and over again is how this one side is counting on this particular vote no matter what 
because of these narratives are painted constantly throughout the weeks and months leading up to every election and every major decision. And it's just, it's fucking weird. And nobody decides to open their eyes a little bit more to it. Yeah. Yeah. I know when Trump first said fake news, I was like, man, this dude, <laughs> he's dangerous. He's a dictator, man. You're not, you know, these are journalists, brother. They're supposed to be holding truth to power. And, and you know, what's wrong? You don't like the questions they're asking? What you mean? Go back to Univision. And then you start to notice that a lot of these quote unquote journalists are really just working for super biased media. Um, half the time, man, I'm not going to say half the time, but there have been instances of spies from other countries working in your fucking mainstream media. But they haven't been that credible. Yeah. They're really not that entertaining. No. They sure as fuck ain't funny. <laughs> uh, and they're not very truthful. Um, so, so, yeah, anyway. You got to miss Trump. Trump's tweets and him on TV. It's just for the entertainment factor. Go ahead. Bill Maher, before we forget, because yeah. we already showed you the Sarah Silverman. Bill Maher, who is credited with being like a progressive democrat type dude who a lot of times tells it like it is and a lot of times he he just makes it seem like he's borderline about to be conservative or i don't know he just he calls motherfuckers out and i love this video i put it on the uh, at what did he said instagram page where he's basically saying america it's a wrap we lost to china already because we're worried about some silly people shit Let's play this. It's, it's great. That's the classic phrase from Lawrence of Arabia when Lawrence tells his Bedouin allies that as long as they stay a bunch of squabbling tribes, they will remain. A I'm going to bring it back. You're not going to win the battle for the 21st century if you are a silly people. And Americans are a silly people. That's the classic phrase from Lawrence of Arabia when Lawrence tells his Bedouin allies that as long as they stay a bunch of squabbling tribes, they will remain a silly people. Well, we're the silly people now. Do you know who doesn't care that there's a stereotype of a Chinese man in a Dr. Seuss book? China. All 1.4 billion of them could give a crouching tiger flying fuck. <laughs> because they're not a silly people. If anything, they are as serious as a prison fight. Look, we all know China does bad stuff. They break promises about Hong Kong autonomy. They put Uyghurs in camps and punish dissent. And we don't want to be that. But it's got to be something between authoritarian government that tells everyone what to do and a representative government that can't do anything at all. The clip's long. It's about five minutes long, six minutes long. But that's that's a great clip to be going around making the rounds with Bill Maher because it speaks a lot of truth, and this guy's got a lot of influence. Yeah, and he's calling out... I mean, just in the first minute we saw, yeah. he's already calling out cancel culture. Um, in the case of Dr. Seuss, I think it was the Dr. Seuss company themselves that kind of self-canceled. They did, they did, but they felt the pressure of publications they basically if you print these books we're not going to publish them so why would if you're the person making them why would you make them if your publisher's not going to sell them or can't sell them maybe they were getting ahead of it they were that's what they yeah. were doing so yeah. it's in a way they still yeah. felt the pressure yep de todos modos but yeah that bill maher clip is called losing to china uh real time with bill maher property of hbo <laughs> don't get in trouble don't be bootlegging it <laughs> passing out at the barbershop or the pulga all right next topic 17 democrats vote against reporting Illegal Immigrants to ICE. It's Bill H.R. 8. And uh, this is going to be one of the questions to the listeners. Do you... Oh, is this after that? Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, play it real quick. And then let's see. Look at your thoughts because I don't think you've seen this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Enough is enough, which is why I rise in strong opposition to H.R. 8 and to offer a motion to recommit the bill. This bill is nothing more than a coordinated effort by the authoritarian left to strip away the constitutional rights guaranteed to Americans by the Second Amendment. Instead of criminalizing the innocent actions of law-abiding gun owners, American citizens, we should be focused on stopping real crime in our local communities and enforcing the laws that are already on the books. One way we can do that is by ensuring that ICE is notified when unlawful aliens attempt to purchase a firearm illegally. The FBI reported just last month that NICS had over 10 million people listed as an illegal alien. In fact, this ranks as the number one prohibited category in the FBI's NICS indices. Since 1998, over 28,000 illegal aliens have been denied a firearm after failing a NICS check. With over 2,700 in 2019 alone, 
This means over 28,000 criminals have been allowed to stay in the United States when ICE should have been alerted about their criminal acts, but were not. H.R. 8 fails to do anything to prevent crime, which is why I'm offering this motion to recommit so our nation's laws are enforced. And if you will recall, this MTR passed in 2019 with a strong bipartisan majority. Mr. Speaker, if we adopt the motion to recommit, we will instruct the Judiciary Committee to consider my amendment to H.R. 8 to ensure that the FBI alerts ICE any time an illegal alien is denied a firearm because of NICS. I ask unanimous consent to insert the text of the amendment in the record immediately prior to the vote on the motion to recommit, and I yield back the balance of my time. So, it kind of it uh, presents the question, right? Like, we're seeing a lot of the stuff, the crisis border, Joe Breezy not really talking about it, Chucky not really answering questions about it. Then you have this gun amendment. Uh, so this gun amendment is saying that, is saying what? Basically, the the 17 Democrats that, if I'm not mistaken, voted uh, in 2019 to, to keep it as it is, whereas if an illegal tries to get a gun, somebody that came from the border tries to get a gun, gets denied, ICE would then be told, hey, this guy tried to get a gun illegally. Now, now they all 17 of them, I guess, have flopped and said, no, we don't want you to tell ICE that they tried to get a gun illegally. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, guys, uh, I don't know who's going to get offended by this, but like, should we not try to uphold that law to try to get, keep those guns out of the hands of people that shouldn't have them and one can't get them and is are still trying to get them like can we just see past the the brown skin or the brown color or whatever he, is, or he might not even be mexican he's probably from central america i don't know it's just mm-hmm. it's just one of those odd common and, sense and, laws and we also don't know what they're gonna do with the gun right hypothetically hypothetically yeah they like, might yeah you might they might be strong to a you know supporters yeah but, but they're illegal yeah they're illegal but they're like hey man this is for my self-defense <laughs> We don't yeah. know if they're going to go like they doing, doing carjackings. However, if if a small percentage of illegals who are able to go buy, you know, buy some heat, crack, yeah. crack, you know, they want to be uh, holding some heat. Should let's just say this is how I want to look at it. Let's frame it this way. OK. If some of these illegals get a gun and commit a crime, do something bad with it. Right. Some type of violence that is just going to further vilify immigrants. Immigrants are going to be used as a scapegoat for like all of America's problems and crime. Doesn't that fuck it up for the good immigrants, like the DACA kids and people that are trying to just better themselves and they just want to, uh, they don't want to bother nobody and not be a burden and just stay out the way, like not really be fucking shit up. Um, you know, laying low, yeah, <laughs> which isn't the best way to live, right? You're watching your back all the time, being undocumented, um, stressful. Um, but that, in other words, if some, if you have a few bad apples and you let them have a gun and they commit crime, it's making it bad for the good apples because yeah. now they're like, bro, I'm over here just trying to see if I can get some DACA <laughs> or some of this amnesty Joe Breezy promising, and y'all over here about to be on the news talking about yep ms-13 yeah. look what they did over here yeah las, en otras palabras, las a cagar para los demás. right so the question i guess that we po- that i was posing with uh taking this note down is do you think that they're just pandering to our people do you yeah. or not, and not even just our people just brown skin people in general the way that they do to the black community yeah let us know in the comments uh youtube instagram wherever you can on the patreon are democrats trying to pander to the brown vote with moves like this do you think they might be working our community to secure future votes? And I would say yes. You tell us what you think and maybe what your friends and family think. Because yeah. I know the conversations have to be going on with people that have like that one conservative like son, daughter, or like family member to their parents who are a little old school, maybe don't really pay attention too much or care too much, or that they have a very strong feeling one way but don't know why. And then they try to open their minds a little bit and they're like... Nah, the dad or the mom probably just kind of blows them off. Yeah, but but an issue like this, if you were to talk to your tia, and she's not a member of the tia, <laughs> the Tamal Intelligence Agency, and you told her tia, oiga, este, usted cree que si uno que no tiene papeles va y consigue pistola, o quiere comprar pistola, pero dicen, hey, wait, no debes, y le vamos a, a llamar a ICE. That's fucked up. But, but then again... I mean, that sounds bad because it's like, man, I know, he I just want to have some heat. Exactly. What you got to call? Man, he didn't know. You're just going to call ice on this man. But when you look, you know, the, your tia might look at it like, well, hold on now. All of a sudden, maybe this just isn't a priority. Like, what is ice for? Yeah. 
You know, because we said on the last episode, they're doing the catch and release stuff where if you're breaking into cars in a neighborhood and they arrest you and they're like, hey, man, you're breaking the law of the U.S. or whatever state, we got to call ICE. And that's not that's no longer a thing now because of Joe Breezy. So now it's catch and release. It's like, hey, man, stop breaking into cars. And then they let them right back out in the neighborhood. Yeah. So. No más se quiere proteger. Yeah. All right, maybe. Yeah, I don't, you don't, that's. And again, it. Is Second Amendment really more reserved as a privilege to citizens and not, hey, man, think about how many Iranian, none against, you know, none against Persians or anybody from any other country, but it's not just Latinos in Central America. Isn't this for all undocumented? So right. you don't know, you don't know what side of the Syrian civil war or, or we, Obama might have droned somebody from that country they over here pissed off yeah they trying to get a gun right and then you got let's say you have undocumented people with mental health for example which is overlooked uh more times than not that could be a thing yeah you know just throwing it out there all right so your boy joe breezy is in the news well obviously only some news because they're not going to put it in all the news no nope. he had to just deploy some of that fema to take care of these teenagers and children crossing the border in record numbers. Um, people try to argue with us on the What Did He Said page, but they're like, you weren't this vocal when Trump was doing it, and what's the difference? You know, they had kids in cages then, kids in cages now. And it's like, no, when Trump was in office, he was threatening Mexico with sanctions, saying, you have to start protecting your southern border because you got people from all over the world basically coming on through your country, like, o sea de pasada mm -hmm. and Mexico wasn't tripping they're like alright man and the, even the local communities they'd give them some some beans and shit to hold them over and let them continue to make that voyage because they knew it wasn't going to be a burden on them they knew their taxes weren't going to go up but when Trump had said hey man y'all got to stay over there y'all got to stay in Mexico that's when you were seeing all the Honduran homeless people along like in Monterrey I got a joke about it uh, in my set where we literally went out there And seriously, bro, like people out there just can't work and they're holding up signs. But is that's the that's one of the differences between how Trump was trying to do it, you know, telling Mexico to pitch in with some resources so that we can have a better flow. And he was trying to build a wall and he was trying to have people go through points of entry so that you can go filter out who's a sex trafficker who's a sex traffic victim who really ain't related to the person they're with you know what i mean who's an unaccompanied minor who's who are really coming with their parents so that we don't accidentally rip them away from their parents so he had a different approach and now the way biden is doing it biden's approach is like hey on day one on day one i'm i'm, I'm gonna give 11 million undocumented on day one so of course People are going to make this long voyage and then they arrive and they get put in, in a fucked up situation. Hey, what if you read those signs and it was in English? ¿Cuál? <laughs> the ones you said were in Monterrey. Like, what if it read in English, you know, we'll work for food. Just trying to get to Mexico. <laughs> Or they're, just, mean, uh, they're trying to pan it to the white people that are yeah. visiting Mexico so they can make it to the United States. Yeah, dude, but like... Trying to keep it light, everybody. <laughs> trying to keep it light. Well, the, the Uber driver, he kept it real. He's like, man, we need to build a wall and, and make Honduras pay for it. Oh, your, uh, your, uh, what was it? <laughs> the people that were, that, that gave, picked us up in the airport. Right, right, right. And I asked, I'm like, hey, man, what's all this homeless situation? Because I like to pay attention to what's the industry here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where do people work? Like, you get a sense of, you know, if, if everybody there's blue collar or, or Try whatever. Try to keep your ear to the ground. Yeah. Just understand economics and just to peep game. Um, so I asked and he basically said, man, these are, these are Honduran folk. This is how he said it. He said, they realized that the American dream is no longer cross through Mexico, make it to America. He said, they realized the, the real dream is cross through Mexico, stay in Mexico, and let the Mexican people take care of you. That's what he didn't like. Mm. So he, you, needless to say, he was very conservative. Interesting. And, yeah. So you see this left and right, liberal versus whatever, you know, you're woke. All that shit's happening everywhere. Yeah. When I ran into them, them cats at the uh, CVS from Chile, They were telling me, no, brother, don't go to Chile, bro. All South America is bad. It's bad. He's like, they're making the cops look like the bad guys. And and uh, uh, an indigenous dude went up to the cop with the machete and the, the cop had to defend himself and he shot him. It became an indigenous lives matter type of thing. And they're spray painting all cops of bastards, literally in English, ACAB, 
all in Chile. And they're having riots every day. It looks like Antifa. And again, people think they're on the right side of history. They think they're being revolutionary. They think they're sticking up for the downtrodden and standing up to the, the status quo and the establishment. But really, you just burning shit. <laughs> You just burn this shit and you're going about it the wrong fucking way. But what do I know? I'm just a 41-year-old comedian. Before we get to Chucky's video here on this, um, have you had... A- talking about Jen Psaki. <laughs> yeah, Jen Psaki. Have you... Uh, actually, I don't know how to say her name, really. Is it... No, it's, they it's say Psaki, the P, right? They say the P is silent, silent. but, but I'm going to say that P. Psa- yeah, because she a... Psaki. She a... P- no. Um, you know, Poo Psaki. Poo Psaki. She a Poo Psaki. Uh, that's like an insult for a dude, you pussacky. You little pussacky. Uh, have you had a conversation with, like, any families about, like, what their idea of the American dream was or why they came to the States when they did? Do you have any ideas of, like, what their responses would be? Yeah, I mean, my dad would always say stuff like, you know, there's too much corruption in Mexico. They're not going to let you win. They're not, they're always going to hold you down. They're not, they're not going to let you, um, get over on them. And he basically said, all the politicians are crooked. They selling out the country from under us. Like, the whole system is rigged down there. Your vote don't count. And that's why he came to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> and here we are, you stupid motherfuckers. Y'all done made this shit. Damn, we moving backwards, man. Uh, it's like, y'all act like y'all don't like fucking rights. Y'all act like y'all don't like freedom of speech and shit like that. You need to join the Thea. Hit up patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales and stop being a little pussacky. <laughs> Let's see what, uh, I forgot this guy's name, but he asked some pretty damn good questions, this Fox reporter. I think it's like something docky or ducky. Acabron. Acabron. The border, meaning that the administration feels what is happening down at the border is a disaster. I know that we always get into the fun of labels around here, this but bitch. I would say our focus is on solutions. Team of those specifically, their mission is helping people before, during, and after disasters. I will say that um, FEMA is... Uh, there to help uh, ensure that the people who are at the border, who are coming across the border, uh, have access to uh, can uh, to HHS and ORR shelters, that we can swiftly f- place them with vetted families. I also had a chance to ask... It's funny that the guy's name is in the fucking tweet. I didn't even read it. Mm-hmm. Peter Ducey, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this be will not give a straight answer to save her life. She's doing her job. That's what she's supposed to do. She's supposed, ah. she's supposed to, um, for one, she has a very difficult job because she's trying. All right, she, Kaylee. All right, Kaylee. Yeah, right. Kaylee said that. She did. Yeah, she said, she good did. luck. Because it was kind of a slug. When Kaylee said it, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> she made it seem like you're having to cover up for their fuck ups. Yeah. So she said, basically. That's why it's a very hard job. My heart's out. My heart's going out. Good luck. Me. So her job is to frame, spin, deflect uh buy time circle back try to get the questions in advance try to know who to call on and when everything's politicized when you have all these issues like the 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 disaster Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it i know some people depending on what news network you watch you may prefer to not call it a disaster yeah some people might no no way call it a fucking crisis because that's what it is and I, i see the comments firsthand i just put it on my facebook where I said, um, hey, Latino Hollywood, I just want y'all to peep game and see, because maybe y'all don't know yeah. uh, of what's <laughs> happening. And um, I posted an hour ago. Let me see how many comments. Of course, people are just up at arms, man. Like, you, what are you doing to help? And I say, stay tuned, because I have a show coming up in Mission, and I'm making some calls. So we plan on doing some coverage for the Red Pill Tamales, for the Patreon, while we're down there. So, yeah, look at this. 944 comments, 941 shares. Almost the same amount of comments as there is shares. 2,000 likes, apparently. I think that's what that is right there. Mm -hmm. So, half of the likes are comments. Um, Yeah, so, uh, of course, it's a very touchy subject. Yeah. We're, We're Latinos. We obviously have, like, a soft spot in our hearts for immigrants, especially kids in cages. That shit was fucked up then. It's a fucked up situation. And I think one of my main points is this is proof that Biden is going to either have to do what Trump was doing or was going to do because that's probably the only or best option or B, make shit worse. So he's either going to have to do what Trump was doing in a Trump-like manner (laughs) and just do the same shit 
where he's having to rename these said cages. Yeah. So, you know, just peep game. This is, and this issue also shows how beholden Latino Hollywood is to the Democratic Party. They're not going to say shit. I no. guarantee you, they can't say shit because Joe Breezy's in office and Latino Hollywood, I guess they've already kind of committed. You know, maybe they have already told us to vote for these people. They was kissing ass to these people. They don't want to look like they're pro-Trump in any way. That's career suicide. Um, so they're not going to say shit. They're not, all of Hollywood is left. Trust me. They're going to shut the fuck up. They're not going to say a motherfucking thing. And if they do, they're going to have to be very careful about it, right? They're going to have to be like, um, fuck, how do we make it seem like we're not going against Joe Biden? Yeah. We can't be mean to Joe Biden. We just helped him get elected. Not, Check, not checkmate. Just, yeah, dude, not just helped him, but like probably won because of all of that ridiculous Cheerleading stuff. and parading. Yeah. Checkmate. How many more chess moves we got to do to prove you're not going to say anything? We, <laughs> move upon, you know what I'm saying? You put yourself in a situation where this dude is making shit worse. He's making shit worse. It's more people having a hard time down there. Anyway. We're going to have to have that expert on soon. Um, hopefully at the beginning of season four, just so that we can get some clarification from people that have boots on the ground. Here we go. In the border. Yeah, of course, people saying Biden inherited a mess of an immigration system. Takes time to fix it. That is such an ignorant comment. Here's another one. Bruh, I have just lost all respect for you. Stop playing into media and instead see the truth for what it is. It's a broken system that no president can fix alone. What you don't understand is he made it worse. He basically said, on day one, dale gas, I got you. On day one, I got you. And people are like, this is our chance. You can't blame them for making that dangerous voyage. Some of these kids are coming alone. Joe didn't make it worse. What happened was the media in Mexico started saying that we were granting amnesty, so the surge increased. The amnesty was only for those who already are in the country. Someone said, not Biden's America, it's us, the people's America. We are responsible for what is happening at the border. We voted for the people that makes this possible. Okay, no, this dude's he part, like he part of the, the, the theater. <laughs> Chingo definitely is not a reliable source for news or political information. Just saying. You really? You'd be surprised. You would be surprised. You'd be surprised because I'm a. I have. We've already made so many predictions, such as how long is Biden, Joe Breezy, Joseph Raheem Breezy, gonna be in office? And before he uh, drops some some bombs, drops some bows on him. Look at this one. Just to be clear, he's not yanking them away from their parents. This is a woman named Debbie Lamb Buckman. It doesn't even sound like someone who follows me. That sounds like it's a Russian a Russian fake account. Look, look at it. Yeah, his comedy got dry. Please report facts. Why don't you interview people? I don't see you in there with a mic and copyrights on others' picks don't count. Border always has stuff going on. We need to ask border patrols. They're the ones risking their lives and working 18-hour shifts. We all love our people, but it has to be done legally. We all know that. Chingle Bing News. Thumbs down. <laughs> mm. All right, let's not ruin the day. Yeah. Let's not ruin the day with the, the comment section. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, man, it's fucking nuts. Um, I like to revert back to what I said earlier. Common sense. We're trying to be the show of common sense. You might disagree with it. You might agree with it. You might mm -hmm. have some uh, differing opinions. But when it comes down to it, this is so... Uh, this show is so like loosely based like there's not a real format to where we have a producer that says we got to say something or the certain uh, points that we have to get to a lot of the times this is one of the first times we actually got through all the bullet points mm. uh we usually go back and forth on different things that we forget to mention so the idea that you you think that this is the most matter of fact stuff out there is not true but it is definitely more reliable in a lot of times than some of the shit you're gonna see on tv or hear on the radio that i can promise you because mm -hmm. we do our research outside of what they say because if you only get it from the tv or the radio how do you know that there's not something else that you could possibly tune into somebody sharing that video what's up no i, I posted all oh. hours in the comments just so they could get more um oh yeah that one's good pro human trafficking and and child you know kids being trafficked and i was never pro fentanyl i was never mr uh pro promoting cartels and shit because right now biden 
He's helping the cartels enrich themselves. That's the clip I was talking about. So if it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram, go share that one. Uh, side note here, there's a new feature on Instagram, if I'm not mistaken, where mm -hmm. you can see uh, the shares from your posts. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, people like reshare it to their story? Yeah, like if, you, if we went to that one you did earlier where Trump's jerking off the ghosts, Yeah, I think we can click the buttons and... Um, Maybe it's not on that. They're rolling it out. Oh, yeah. View story reshares. Okay. There's a new feature. So you click on that and we can see how many people oh. have reshared it. Oh. oh. You know what it reminds me of? What? Oh. Of TikTok. Oh, yeah? It looks like like TikTok when people do duet, duet or stitch. Or a something. lot of these fucking... Uh, I saw Snapchat. I don't really use Snapchat anymore. Do you use it? Nah. I'm slack. I, I haven't posted on Snapchat in ages. Everything. The reels. It's just too much. It really is. Snapchat. Patreon. See, there. I like to be on there. Yeah, that's a way. That's a that's a real community. Yeah, that's like a community. That's that's people. They have your back. Like I said, I met some of these folks in San Angelo. Like, hey man, I'm a member of the Thea, and it caught me off guard because this is one of the first shows back as the podcast has been blowing up. Yeah. So I was like, what are the chances huh. that out of our growing uh, Patreon? Some of these cats were actually at the San Angelo show. I was like, what are the chances? Anyway, uh, members of the Thea. Tamal, uh, Tamal Intelligence Agency are throughout. You don't know who's Thea, bro. Yeah, right. And it's only one, you know, one of the rules of Thea is there is no Thea. I want to get back to it real quick. I was just going to say the apps are all looking the same. Instagram, yeah. TikTok, Snapchat, they all have the same, the portrait look with the thing on the side, the little hard, the share, all the thing. I don't know. Nobody's got an original idea anymore. Yeah, they're all copying. And that's that's been one of China's strategies. Like instead of them doing a lot of the heavy lifting with their with their innovations and their tech, the heavy lifting of research and development. Yeah. That's a process. You're doing an experiment. You you need an engineering team. You need coders. And you're having to like do these iterations and try to make your product better. China just spies. Yeah. And they just they steal all the info and then they sift through it. Yeah. And I think the, the best way I heard it put recently was that if you want to play ball with them and have their country be uh basically you know giving you money like a, a viable pot of cash you're either going to play ball and share some of your insights you know tech whatever or they're just going to take it yeah yeah and that's so, what they've done for a very long time yeah and we don't have a lot of manufacturing left here in our country um a lot of people try to argue that they're just a friendly ally with different cultural norms however you know, not only are they stealing tech, they pumping in that fence and all through that border. Man, that one got swept under the rug too fast. Uh, the whole, like, they're just different cultural norms when they were, at, I think, uh, what's his name? Silver Fox was asking him about uh, the Uyghur camps, I think, and what they were doing with these concentration camps. Oh, yeah, camps. yeah, yeah, yeah. Anderson Cooper. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, Silver asked, Fox. Yeah, he asked him uh, about the Uyghur camps. What are they saying, man? Look, I think it's because they're Muslim and the way... I guess China knows that the future they want to move in sounds like it can't get there yeah. if they get too many Muslims. Yeah. That's basically how they see it. You know, I'm not, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to show y'all how we're trying to process the situation, which is they doing some genocide over there. And they saying that, um, I think basically like they, Dude, you got to look this shit up. Basically, the amount of organ transplants. See, I'm scared talking about this shit. I know. You started whispering. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, check, God, hey uh... check this out, man. The amount of organ transplants that they're doing, the shit don't add up because they only have like 60 organ donors, like registered organ donors, but they making like, they make, they got like 60,000 of these organs. You can get a kidney for 60 oh, racks. Oh, yo, that reminds me of 60 racks. Yeah, about 60, 50 racks for a kidney, 150 for a heart. Um, and basically you can just order it like on demand instead of like we got to wait for somebody to die and be registered as a donor they're like no 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 what you want to do tuesday you want to come into what you need and when they put you in them camps they be checking your blood type and they be trying to see you a good little candidate mm. and they try to keep your lung you know your, your kidneys good just in case keep the motherfuckers on nice that reminds me of the shit not too long ago that i remember hearing where uh, there, the CCP's uh, population, like <laughs> if you were looking at a, um, uh, that's called the Chingo Chat podcast. That's the <laughs> Chingo Chats podcast available on Patreon only. Yeah. If we looked at a map of their cell phone users, uh -huh. apparently over a course of time, 
when they relooked at this map, this sounds like something Ed, shout out Ed, sent me. I don't know how true this is or how conspiratorial it is, but the map had, like, let's just say a quarter of it was just gone. These registered cell phone users just yeah. disappeared. Yeah. What? Yeah, I've heard people try to debunk it. I've heard a lot of theories where people are like, well, uh, maybe just, you know, people didn't want to, you know, be on cell phones no more. And oh, it's like, right, no, right. I can't remember what it was. Like, maybe they upgraded and they closed that account or so some theory, some people theorize that it's like mm, maybe they were hiding their COVID deaths. I don't know. Bunch of shit, man. Hey, man, I'm just a comedian, man. According to Facebook, I don't know shit. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff to get to on, on Thursdays or on Friday's episode. I mean, we didn't talk about the Grammys. You know, there's mm-hmm. um kinds of other, you know the George Floyd stuffs going on. Yeah, I heard they were scissoring. Cardi B and, and Megan did the scissor lock though. Mm, 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 yeah, I saw mm, that. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. It's a little aggressive there. Yeah. A little aggressive. Yeah. Aggr- aggressive scissor lock. Let's get back to the San Angelo show. I want to hear your experience getting to the show, being back there, like sold out shows, right? Full audience. Mm-hmm. You're feeling the heat. You're feeling the groove. You're feeling the energy. Uh, and then also, you know, more a little more on the on the TIs, on the TIA that you met. What went through your head when you were like, when somebody said that they were. Well, the I was TIA? like, man, I wish Rob was here. <laughs> he ain't going to believe me. Uh, but it was, it, it, it kind of did take me aback because. I honestly don't know how many people are really peeping game, Mm -hmm. not falling for the okie doke, keeping an open mind, understanding that the media is, they lie, they're biased, they're not, they don't really have your best interests at heart a lot of times. They just see you as dollars. They just want to advertise to you. But it really took me aback because I didn't know how much of an influence or how, how much these clips are spreading or, or these, you know, people are sharing the podcast and, and I just want to be as truthful, as honest, as transparent and just, you know, I just hope that by now y'all, y'all get a little bit of a sense of my character and that, you know, I'm a, I'm a be, what's the word I'm looking for, man? Like real as fuck. Yeah. Especially reel it in the rest in, in terms of like, they're not going to say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, not, they're not. They can't. They can't. And if they do, they're going to have to find a very tricky way to be like, um, you know, politics aside, you know, this has nothing to do with the Democrats. Not talking about you, but we're going to go help the kids yeah. or something. I don't know. How was the experience on stage? How did everybody do and how did you feel that the shows went? Oh, man. Uh, great feedback. Uh, of course, people love Ralph Bar- Barboza and Midnight. Um you know, everybody had a blast, man. People looked like they were ready to laugh, ready to get out, uh, be free. You know, again, this is San Angelo, Texas. This isn't Austin. Yeah. You know what I mean? And on the way, on the drive back, shout out to all those beautiful barbecue places. I haven't eaten so much barbecue in, in like the span of 72 hours just because you see a lot of that and you got to take advantage uh, out there in Central Texas. So driving back through Austin, we were... We stopped at a little barbecue place in a quaint little country town. It's like, okay, what's this? Is this a diner next door? And a nice little barbecue spot. They got a patio. And, and Marisol soul's like, you know what? This is nice. You know, this <laughs> seems like a nice little getaway. <laughs> She's like, we should probably put a little Tex-Mex spot or something on this strip, you know, with people driving through and this and that and da-da-da-da-da. Because in her mind, it's desolate. She's like, I wonder what these people do. And I was like, man, these people got money. Yeah. I was like, look. This little white family, all of them got Lululemon. They, the truck got a, uh, a kayak in the back. I was like, they're vacationing. The little boy got a Colorado sweatshirt. Like, they just came back from Breckenridge. So then we get back on the freeway, on the, on the road, and it's like, oh, shit. There's, like, some mansions over here. Now I realize this is what a Silicon Valley, like, the Austin tech people that mm-hmm. might work for fucking Amazon, Google, Dell, HP. They're probably buying out here, these big-ass cribs. Mm-hmm. This might be their summer home or their second house. And now you drive a little bit down the road. Now you have everything. Now, oh, there's the Whole Foods, the Barnes and Nobles. Like, so it's like basically the outskirts of Austin, but beautiful. That's what you're talking, referring to? Because I remember I uh, <laughs> went with you guys to San Angelo two years ago. And on the way back, I got pulled over. Oh, I got pulled over. There's, I think it was San Angelo. There's like a long stretch just before you get into San, San you're Angelo. You're not thinking of Waco? I don't think it was Waco. I okay, think it okay. was San Angelo. Okay. Either way, uh... Man, it was like early. I left before y'all did. Oh, wherever we had to go to, I think Discount Tire. You had a flat. We had to go take the, the car there to get a new tire. Whatever wow. city, city we were in. I can't even remember. You remember that? that? So then I had to pick y'all up, and then we went somewhere, and then dropped you back off to get the on the Infinity to get the tire. Anyway, 
Next morning, I left super early to get back home, and there's a stretch of like 15 miles of nothing, 20 miles of nothing, and I just put it on cruise control, and I, I was in the left lane, and then I see a state trooper, ways like, you know, police recorded ahead, and I was like, all right, whatever, not really realizing. <laughs> Jamming heavy metal, dun, 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 100%, 100%, and then. That, After never, never let that's, Yeah, well, I mean, that's overplayed, but yes, good song, good call, good call. I wasn't going that fast. I might have been going like two or three over, but that's not why he pulled me over. He pulled me over because I was in the left-hand lane. Like, sir, uh, you realize this is a passing only? And I was like, what? We were up late. I probably slept like four or five hours. I was just like, what? He goes, uh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm not really from here. I'm just here, you know, on, on business or something like that. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll be right back. Comes back. Things just going to get a warning. It was a $400 ticket. It was a $400 what? ticket. What? For, for, oh my god! And as he and as he's writing me the ticket, a Toyota Tundra flies by at at least ninety. And I I said, you know that guy's speeding, right? He's like, I don't have him pulled over. I was like, you son wow. of a bitch! What if he was like, he ain't in the passing lane? <laughs> ah. He had to have been because you have to move over when the cop pulls you over. Yeah, it's true. Anyway, I got also got pulled over when we came back from McAllen. Damn, son. You know what? You look like a terrorist or something. That has to be what it is. Here's what happened. Here's the difference, though. Don was with me when we were doing that party at, at Suerte, remember? You look like a terrorist with a hostage. A hundred percent. That's what I told her. And, but the reason I didn't get a ticket that time, and I was going four over, right? And we had just crossed the checkpoint, right? And uh, like no more than half a mile, a mile down the road, I get pulled over. And it's just me and Don. And we have the baby sits in the back, but we left the, ba- we have left the kids with her dad so that we can go to McAllen for the weekend, right? <sighs> The guy's like super dickish. I always get state troopers that just aren't kind. So still, you know, back to blue, but at the same time, be nicer, right? Dude pulls me over and says, uh, where are you guys coming from? <laughs> oh my God. And I told him, he's like, it's licensed, this and that, addresses. He's just being real like skeptical. He's like, uh, where are the kids at? And I was like, what? Because he saw the baby seats, but no babies. And I was like, oh, you know, whatever. He gave him the story. And answering questions, where's this city, you know, uh, 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 like adjacent to Houston? And I was like, what? Wait, he asked you where the city is? Where yeah, you- where my license was. Oh like, I was like, outskirts of Houston or whatever. And then uh, finally lets me go after like 10 minutes of like questioning. And then I told Don after he let me go, he's like, you know why he let me go, right? Because you were in the passenger seat. If I didn't have a blonde with big tits in the passenger seat, I for sure was going to get a ticket or arrested. Damn. So that's two out of like five times that I'm with Chingo, I get pulled over if I go out of town. Hey, man, you might have to start blaming your complexion. (laughs) Uh, Maybe it's white supremacy, my brother. You know that's the thing. And the, the guy's name was Officer Short. Dude, you're lucky you made it out alive. 100%. You know, according to the mainstream media, uh, minorities are under attack by the white man. And uh, we should thank our lucky stars that police brutality hasn't gotten to you and I. But you know why I think I also got away with it? Why? Because I'm from a small town. Fucking bam, bam. Because I talk to him like I'm from the country. I definitely turn that twang up whenever I start talking to a cop. God damn it, I'm gringo bling. God, dude. Fuck you mean. You you might think that's offensive, everybody, but that's what gets me out of tickets. Usually, but not those two times. It's a rough draft, y'all. Chingo Bling featuring Gringo Bling. <laughs> it's a rough draft, y'all. Don't judge. Oh, man. People keep calling me, son. The whole time, everybody, while we're on the podcast. Phone's Jesus always blowing Christ. up. Oh my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We'll have to play it for the patrons only on Friday. Jeez, man. Man, these people, bro, how many times you got to call somebody, you press decline? <laughs> it must be an emergency. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Um, all right, man, send us out of here. Yeah. Hey, man. Shout out to the TIA, the Thermal Intelligence Agency. Uh, Appreciate all the listeners. If you're just checking out this public episode for the first time, if you enjoy the banter, hey, we got more shows. We got Chingo Chats. I might start gaming on Twitch, brother. Um, I haven't owned a video game console in years. But uh, Rob, tell them what else we have on the menu. So Thursdays we record the uh, bonus episode, which releases on Friday. So you get another full-length RPT bonus episode. We'll recover the rest of the week's news uh, on Fridays. And then we always start our weeks on Mondays with Chingo Chats, which are 
very very loose non-political, uh, non-political fun it's, i think it's a good way to start the week before we start diving into all of this uh, darkness which i saw an interesting comment about how people are just so it's so just dark and you know repetitive divisive. and divisive that they've uh, tried to almost unfollow all publications of media news and what's going on around the world but that they tune into us because oh, we keep it light you know we keep oh, it fun great, we keep great. it you know keep it real yeah and you get a Hopefully, you feel like you get some value and some entertainment and a nuanced perspective. But I'm your host, Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo. Producer Rob and I are out of here because we got to go save the world and shit. So I will be in Mission, Texas, and I I will be um, hopefully interviewing some people and getting as much coverage as I can down there. We're about to talk about that in a minute. But until the next time, y'all be safe. Peace.